Well, folks, this is a fake, fake stock market. Have you ever been introduced to somebody, you know, maybe it's a friend introducing you to one of their friends or something, and you're like, oh my gosh, this chick or this dude is just so freaking fake. That's a stock market right now, okay? This stock market is ultra level fake right now. And I wanna take you through everything that's going on so you can identify when you're in kind of a fake market versus a, let's call it a little bit more of a real market, which right now we are in definitely a, a very fake stock market, okay? A lot to go through in today's video. I appreciate every single person for being subscribed to the channel, folks. Thank you for being here as always. Obviously, great day for the public account, 30 plus thousand dollar day uh, we'll dive into that a little later on by the way you know a little uh, word of advice to folks out there right and I'm sure some of you guys uh, sometimes will go on forums or wherever and you'll try to talk stocks with people and you always got people you know trying to troll you and tell you you're an, you're an idiot and you're so dumb for buying this stock or that stock at the end of the day tell those people put up their five-year returns put up their five-year returns I guarantee they won't do it and you know why? Because people that actually kill it and are actually getting insane returns year after year and out, actually outperform the market considerably, which this is our five-year return on average per year versus SP500 versus bonds. Imagine if I owned bonds the last five years, I'd be broke. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's insane. But, um, you know, ask them to put up their five-year returns. Trust me, they won't do it. And you know why? Because people that are real players that are actually doing great in the market don't freaking go on these forums and all this crap and talk trash and you're so stupid for buying this stock and you're such an idiot. We don't freaking have time for that. We'd much rather be listening to a conference call. We'd much rather be looking into companies, reading annual reports and financial reports. We don't have time for all that garbage. All that is is broke people that don't have any money that are just there to get you down. Okay, so a lot of times don't even engage in that, you know, whole situation because it's just a bunch of clownery. It will continue to be clownery and uh, the people that actually put up the big numbers are going to actually put up the big numbers, right? And, uh, you know, the numbers speak for themselves, right? So payrolls today increased by 336,000 in September, right? Which absolutely obliterated the estimates. The estimate was for about 170,000. We came in at 336. So one that kind of alleviated some of the recession fears, which was certainly creeping in the market, right? But at the end of the day, every trader's playbook went like this, okay? I mean, every trader's playbook is if that number came in super hot, you needed to uh, basically buy puts, load up on short positions because the market's gonna tank. That was every single trader's playbook for today. And I mean, every single one, okay? And the reason being is the thought process is if jobs are too hot, that means bad for inflation, which means higher for longer, maybe the Fed has to keep raising and those sorts of things, okay? And it means, you know, no cuts anytime soon. So that was a thought process. And what happened? Oh, did they get a pie in their face here today? Oh my gosh, okay, so the numbers come out. The market was already going down. Market goes down initially. People are like, yes, loading up on their, their put options or loading up on their shorts for today. And we know a lot of people are doing these like, you know, zero day, uh, you know, like options now at this point in time. So a lot of people are loading up on these options that expired at the end of the trading day, right? On, on, on the put side, expecting the NASDAQ go down two, three, four, whatever percent. Uh, horrible day because job's too hot. It means inflation bad. means all this stuff, right? And what ended up happening was, the market just took off on them. And I mean, absolutely took off and closed near the highs of the trading day overall. So everybody that was just loading up on, on the short positions, on the put option positions, just got absolutely obliterated here today. I mean, absolutely obliterated. Now, there's something called the, the market maker, okay? And, and the market maker will be put like this. A market maker participates in the market at all times, buying securities, a la stocks, from sellers and selling securities to buyers. Market makers provide liquidity and ensure investors can trade quickly and at a fair price in all conditions. So that definitely makes it, and by the way, who wrote that? Citadel Securities, okay? It definitely makes them sound like, oh, they're just a, you know, a good, helpful person out there, okay? Well, a lot of people that are more into the trading stuff and more into this, this stuff, like for instance, math, right? I can tell you those people don't have such a positive view of the market maker, okay? And, you know, Mav's gone into this many times on how the market maker is basically there to squeeze uh, a, a lot of people and make folks not make nearly as much on their call options or their put options as possible and try to really squeeze and screw everybody and screw both sides. And they can do this and kind of manipulate the market several different ways in the short term, where essentially they can, you know, everybody thinks the market's going to go negative. They can turn the market positive or on the flip side, they can do it the other way. And basically they just screw everybody. Everybody ends up getting screwed. And I remember Mav even talking about it several days ago when he was talking about, you know, don't be surprised if Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, we get a big bounce in the market and it'll screw all these people that are making all this money on put options. And so he always says like, always be closing and things like that, right? And uh, 
Yeah, they absolutely wrecked everybody this week. Uh, the call option people got screwed this week. The put option people got screwed this week. Both sides got squeezed. And uh, ultimately, the market maker ended up probably looking very good as always. And that's that's the, um, you know, that's what you have to deal with on the short-term basis, which is another reason why I just focus on long-term investing, buying fundamental companies, finding great opportunities in this market. Because I don't want to have to deal with all that BS that goes on and all the market manipulation because believe me, if you're talking about on a short-term basis, there's a lot of freaking manipulation that goes on in this market and it's not even, it's not even funny how much goes on, okay? Now, today, obviously, everything looks great. Dow up 300 or so, S&P 500 having a good day, NASDAQ having a great day, right? But you dig a little beneath the surface and what you find is a fake you-know-what market, a fake you-know-what market. Look at this, Okay. Dollar General, well, if today's such a, you know, oh, rally and, and everything's going to be good from here, why is Dollar General, which is down like 85 million percent this year, why is this stock down another two and a half percent here today, right? A dividend stock like that. Why is freaking Jam and Jelly, okay, my favorite stock to talk about right now, are we talking Jam or are we talking Jelly? JM Smuckers, why is JM Smuckers down another percent plus today? And that stock approaching a 30% downfall, of course, is a real like comeback in the market now at this point in time, right? Why is Dollar Tree down again today? Down 27.5 plus percent year to date now at this point in time, Dollar Tree. Kraft Heinz down again today. That stock's are right around, it's lost about a quarter of its value so far this year for Kraft Heinz company. Like I say, with these type of stocks, they lose 25% of their value. That's like Tesla and those sorts of stocks losing 50% plus of their value in a year, right? Kellogg, which is now called Kellanova, right? This stock down again today. Look at all the indexes, so green. And yet Kellogg's is down. Year to date is down over 26%. And look at the chart for this baby. I mean, it's showing no signs of recovery. So if this is a real rally and not some sort of fake out, why is a stock like that just continue to get in plummet, right? Look at Monster. Monster was $59 just a few months ago. It's all the way down to $49. This stock was Red Dead Redemption again today. Look at Target. Target, Target. Holy smoke as this ain't no jokers. This stock is down 34 plus percent here today. And it's basically around break even for the trading day. Where's the recovery in Target? If this is a real rally, if we're going to start going up from here, why is Target not playing in this? Why are none of these stocks that are big name companies playing in on this, right? General Mills is around break even today. Why is it not a nice green day for General Mills, right? Another dividend stock. Keep in mind, almost all these stocks I just showed you, right? Super famous companies that have been around for decades that are going to be around for a lot more decades to go in the future. Almost all of them are big dividend payers. And look at this. General Mills is having trouble even being green today. Stock's down 27% plus year to date. Look at Clorox. Clorox is break even today. Where's the gains in Clorox? This stock is down almost 19% in the past one month. One month in Clorox is down almost 19%, right? PepsiCo is down about 14% in the past three months, and this one's having trouble even staying green today. What's going on here? Where's the real rally, right? Whirlpool, down about 15% in the past three months. Red today. Red Dead Redemption, big dividend yielder on that one. WBA, one of the biggest dividend yielders you're going to find out there. Red Dead Redemption again here today. Lost a quarter of its value just in the past three months. No recovery in sight for WBA, right? Look at Cake. You say, oh, jobs report, great. It's got to mean great news for the restaurants. Well, maybe in theory, but the stock's not reacting like it, right? Stock down a percent here today, down 13% plus in just the past three months, right? Look at the housing stocks. What's going on with these housing stocks? If this is a real recovery, if we're going to start going up from here, why aren't the housing stocks going up a bunch, okay? These stocks are pathetic. I mean, just absolutely pathetic. I mean, you know, they're all like very slightly green, like 0.5% moves here today, right? 0.5% moves across the board for a ton of these stocks. Where's the real rally? So you know what I said? I said, let me go ahead. I want to take a look at some of these stocks that have been the great performers this year. How did those stocks do today? Or all we're doing is reverting to what's been working and against what hasn't been working. Because maybe there's something going on here. And so I said, let me take a look. And I dug beneath the surface and here's what I found. I found Meta, Meta, the biggest stock in the public account, having a phenomenal day again here today, okay? We're up 20,000 plus dollars on Meta here today, right? Up three plus percent, guess what? Meta's been the play the whole year, right? And so all today is, is reverting back to a stock like Meta, right? I said, let me dig a little deeper. Palantir, it's been Palantir's year. Where was Palantir at the start of this year? Answer me that. $5, 
$6 a share at the beginning of this year? Go back, pull up a stock chart on Palantir at the beginning of this year. I think it was a $5 or a $6 stock, right? Palantir today closed at 16 something dollars a share, right? Which this has been the play the whole year. Like this is Palantir's time, right? And probably going to continue to be Palantir's time here for a bit. Stock was up 5% here today. 5%. We have $4,500 in Palantir reverting back to what's working and what wasn't working. Elf on a Shelf has had a tremendous year, right? A tremendous year. Look at Elf today. Almost up 4%, up $3,000 plus on the stock, right? Reverting to what's been working in the market. Look at big tech in general. This is uh, some of the big tech watch list I have. Snowflake was up 6.5% today. AMD up 4 plus percent. Palo Alto Network, Networks up 4%. Meta is up obviously in the 3 to 4% range. Intuit up 3% plus. Shopify up 3%. Salesforce up a little under 3%, right? This is a, this is a reversion to what's been working this year in people still saying, I don't want to own what hasn't been working, which goes to show you, this is what happened today, looks like it's the market maker, and these folks that manipulate the market certain ways and certain directions they wanted to manipulate, that's all it looks like today. This doesn't look, the the rally you're seeing in the market today is not like a fundamental-based We believe stocks are going up from here. We believe in this market. It's not that. If you would really feel like things are going to be great for 24, you would have seen housing stocks really start to roll today. You would have seen all these dividend and these great value stocks that have been beaten down dogs really rally today and at least keep up with the S&P 500. Almost all of them didn't even keep up with the S&P 500 today, which you have to ask yourself, why not, right? And so this goes into what's actually transpiring in this market versus, um, you know, let's call it the reality versus the, the, the phony, the fake stuff you're starting to see out there, right? Now, we know Wall Street's playbook for 2022, right? Wall Street's playbook for 2022 was sell tech, sell growth stocks, sell everything, right? And that's why you saw stocks like Shopify fall to $25 last year. That's why you saw stocks like Netflix fall to $180 last year. That's why you saw Nvidia fall to $110 last year. That's why you saw Meta fall to under $100 last year. And that's why you saw Tesla at the beginning of this year at, a, you know, what was it, $101 or whatever at the start of the year, right? That's why you saw stocks like Palantir at five or six bucks at the beginning of this year, right? And you just go down the list. That was a playbook. And these, these Wall Streeters, they didn't care what they sold these stocks at, right? They, they sold them at whatever price they could possibly get. I, I mean, I guess they all thought they were all, all the companies were going to go bankrupt in the world or something like that. Absolutely incredible, right? And you can't even use rates as an excuse. Because here's the thing. If you want to use rates as an excuse, then why are these stocks rallying this year? It doesn't make any sense. Rates are still going up. And now the belief is rates are going to stay far higher for far longer than anybody anticipated even 12 months ago, Right? And rates are obviously much higher now than they were even 12 months ago. So if it was all about rates, if that was the reality, okay, I can tell you all these big tech stocks wouldn't be performing the way they're performing. It goes way beyond rates. Rates are just a thing to manipulate the market whatever way they want to manipulate the market. And if they want to have you look over here and say, rates are really good uh, for us now, then they're going to say that. If they're saying, oh, rates are going to stay higher for longer, this is really bad, they're going to manipulate things over this way. It really goes to whatever they want to do. But rates are just an excuse to do whatever they want to do really in the short term. And if that is sell off growth stocks, it's sell off growth stocks. If that sell out dividend stocks, it's sell out dividend stocks. And it's, a lot of times it's not going to make any damn sense in the short term, but it's the games they play. And so you just got to understand as a longer term investor in the market, right? You're just in this big game that they're playing. You have to stay focused on what you're, you're focused on, right? So my playbook for 2022 was gobble up all their sales, right? They want to sell me freaking Meta at $88.94. Give me the Meta shares. They want to sell me, heck, I bought Tesla at the beginning of this year for what was it, $103 a share or whatever? They were selling me Tesla at the beginning of this year for, you know, a hundred, a little over a hundred bucks. Okay. Give me the freaking Tesla shares. I don't care. Like, are you kidding me? They want to sell me Shopify at this price. They want to sell me Amazon at this price or all these stocks. Like that was my name of the game in 2022. I gobbled up all their sales, all these silly stocks that they just, you know, are silly prices that it's just like, what are you guys doing? Okay. Now the playbook changed for 23. The, the playbook for 2023 from wall street is sell the dividends, sell the values. Doesn't matter. The P ratio, it doesn't matter how big the dividend yield is. None of that matters, folks. And it honestly, it really doesn't even matter about rates, okay? They'll use rates as an excuse once again, no different than they used rates as an excuse to sell growth stocks last year. 
That was their excuse. And all of a sudden, what? Rates don't matter now? Now, now we don't care about rates? And, and Meta's three hundred plus dollars a share instead of eighty-eight dollars a share, and, and Nvidia's a hundred, you know, uh, four hundred and what's that? Nvidia four hundred twenty-five dollars or four hundred fifty dollars instead of one hundred ten dollars. So all of a sudden, we cared about rates last year for growth stocks. Now this year, we don't care about rates for growth stocks. It doesn't make any freaking sense. Give me a break. It's a joke. Last year, no one cared about rates when it came to dividend stocks and value stocks. Many of those stocks held up pretty darn well last year. All of a sudden, this year, oh, rates. Now we care about rates. Where were we at last year when rates were shooting higher? And no one cared about it in regards to stock, but now we care about it? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> See how they can, you know, manipulate this stuff to, however they want to manipulate this stuff when it comes to Wall Street, folks. You got to understand the game they're playing here. You know, one minute it matters, the next minute it doesn't, and it's like the same damn thing. One minute, you know, jobs report supposed to come in lower than exp- expectations. It comes in way higher. Market go, come on, man. You, you know, you got to be able to see through this game that they're playing here, Okay. And so my playbook in 23 is gobble up all these damn dividend and value stocks they're selling to me for cheap prices. I'm getting so many of these stocks right now at five-year, 10-year, 15-year lows. The list is a long list. And they're treating these stocks like they're freaking penny stocks right now. It's incredible. And I'll gobble up as many of these shares as I can over this next several months. Why they're still out of favor. And why they still are able to use whatever excuse they want to use to sell these stocks. Give me them, give me them, give me them. I'm going to take them all off your freaking hands, okay? I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. It's something, uh, so basically, if you look at how many hedge funds control a billion plus dollars, this was as of 2016, okay? So this is outdated information. I can almost guarantee there's a lot more hedge funds with a lot more money. Now, back in 2016, there were 659 hedge funds that were operating with at least a billion dollars or more, right? So here's how I think about this, right? Me, and I know it might seem like I got a lot of money in the market, I have nothing, freaking nothing in the market compared to these Wall Streeters, okay? These Wall Streeters are the sharks and the whales of the ocean, okay, and of the stock market. Me with, a, you know, a few million dollars, however much I have in the market, it's minuscule, absolutely nothing compared to what they have. My buys and sells are like not even registered on the scale compared to what these guys have, Okay. Their money is different than my money, right? And a lot of them gather a lot of money together in pool and money from investors and high net worth individuals. And that's how they have a billion plus dollars or five billion to invest or 10 billion to invest. It's not they're all, all their own money. Believe me on that. You know, if somebody has a hundred billion dollar hedge fund, it's not their hundred billion dollars. They might have 10 billion of that, which is still incredible, right? But they have these massive amounts. So me as a small player, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change the market. I'm not dictating whether Apple stock's gonna go up 10% next month or down 10% next month. I can't control any of that. I'm just a, I'm just a little fish out here. Okay. I'm a little fish in a big ass, a big dang ocean. Sorry. I'm a big ocean. Okay. With a lot of massive fish all around me. And I'm just like, you know, floating around doing my thing, having a good time. And you know, have you ever, guys ever heard of these before? Uh, some of you guys might've Remoras, uh, which are kind of like sucker, you know, like sucker fish that kind of stick to whales and whatnot. Remoras are known for being the ocean's hitchhikers because they spend most of their lives physically attached to hosts like whales, sharks, and large fish, right? And so the way I kind of think about this, right, is I'm kind of like one of those in this ocean of the stock market, right? I can't dictate whether the stock market goes up a bunch or down a bunch or any of that, right? That's going to be the Wall Street money, the big Wall Street money, okay? But I can still live a phenomenal life inside, uh, you know, just kind of taking the opportunities that these big whales and these big fish give me, right? And the crumbs they kind of throw off and, and, and those sorts of things. And I can let them do the work for me, right? Because these guys are going to do the work for me, no different than the whale is going to do the work for the sucker fish. They're going to be the ones that dictate all these stocks going up in a massive way, down in a massive way. They're going to be the ones that control, you know, this stock goes up 200%, 300%. I can't control that. I can't control that they sold Meta all the way down to $88 last year. I couldn't control that Meta got bought up to $300 plus right now. What is Meta, $310, $320 right now? And probably on its way to $400 or $500. I can't control that. They control that. They're the big whales. They're the big fish. And I'm just out here catching all these these crumbs, and I'm just taking them one by one by one to put my loaf of bread together, right? And I'm going to let them do the work for me. That's that's who's doing the whole work. It's not me. I can tell you that. It's them doing all the work, Okay. And so the way I think about this, right, the public count is $1.7 million plus dollars, right? And it's going to eventually be $2 million, $3 million, $4 million, $5 million, so on and so forth, right? And 
I'll let them do the work for me. I don't, I don't need to do the work in regards to that. They can do the work, okay? I'm going to take the opportunities they give me, and they're going to give me some incredible opportunities. Last year, it was those growth stocks. It was tech stocks. It was big tech. It was mega caps, right? This year, it's dividends. It's value stocks. It's just different years. They give you different opportunities, right? And um, I'm going to take advantage of that, and they can do the work for me. And then guess what? Wall Street will come in, and eventually Wall Street's going to be buying left and right dividend and value stocks again. I wouldn't be surprised if they start to position into many of those stocks in 2024. And as the year goes on, they're going to position likely more and more and more into a lot of those dividend value stocks, right? And they're going to do the work for me once again on the upside. So they do the work on the downside. They do the work on the upside. And I'm just there collecting, collecting, collecting like a toll booth on, on, you know, all these whales and these sharks. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so, you know, the name of the game is to, you know, kind of take advantage of this stuff, guys. And you can take advantage of this and you just got to understand where they're trying to get you to focus is not where you should be focused. Okay. You know, I hope all this is sinking in what we're going through in this last 20 minutes here. I hope all this is sinking in. Let me know in the comments section, if this is all hitting you and you're understanding all this, because I hope it is. And I hope you got in a lot of value out of this. this is a very important video I'm putting out for you here today. I mean, in terms of like, you know, how to scale this game and play this game, because be very clear, we're playing a game here. Okay. And you've got to understand the game you're playing. Otherwise you just don't even understand the rules and, and how this whole game is done. Right now, if you do not understand income st statements, balance sheets, cash flows, if you don't understand how you're getting a great deal or if you're getting an okay deal or a bad deal in the market, if you don't understand portfolio all allocation, if you don't understand the balance of growth and value in dividend stocks, if you don't understand how do I scale from five figures to then six figures to seven figures, right? Um, if you don't know anybody who's done it before, if you don't have a network of people that know how to do this, and if you don't have a mentor you know, it's going to be hard to kind of continue to, let's just call it rise the ranks, right? And so if you don't understand any of those things, if you don't have a network, if you don't know anybody that did, apply to join my private group, folks. We've had a lot of people go through there over time and the amount of people that have been able to scale and get to six figures in a portfolio, seven figures is a phenomenal, phenomenal amount. And you can learn so much being part of that. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And the network you can build there is just unprecedented, okay? So if you want to take advantage of that, apply with a pinned comment. Let's get you in there next week and uh, get you up to a much higher level than where you're at right now, okay? Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thank you so much. Thank you for being subscribed. Busy week next week. Much love and have a great day.